What's up Nightwalkers? It's Will from TNVC and I have another video for you guys. Today I'm going over a brand new thermal monocular from FLIR and this one's called the Scout Pro. The Scout Pro is a new product just released at the very end of 2024. Units are available right now and shipping from online resellers or you can purchase it directly from FLIR. Now the first Scout Pro, this one right here, it's a 19 millimeter lens with a 1x uh, magnification which gives you a 32 degree field of view. They are going to have additional units coming available later this year. They'll have uh, different lens options that have, that give you more magnification. I don't know what those are going to be right now, but it should be in your traditional, you know, thermal type stuff. You're talking 25 millimeter, 35 millimeter, something like that. Now with this particular 1x, uh, you know, 32 degree field of view with this 19 millimeter, I actually prefer this um, for my particular type of a, of a thermal device that I like to use on my property. You'll see it in the videos. You know, my maximum distance on my property uh, that where I could get a clear line of sight is about 100 yards. Um, on average, it's much shorter than that, about 50 yards on average. So having a, w a wide field of view for me is critical. You know, when I look outside, I'm checking, you know, animals we have. If I'm looking for anything out there, you know, if there's coyotes out there, whatever the case is, uh, that wide field of view comes in handy. I can spot anything that I need to spot uh, within the distances that I'm at. If you're somebody and you want a larger um, you know, lens or you want more magnification uh, for longer distance, you're going to have to wait until those units become available later this year. Now, this device, it has a six, it's a 640 by 480. Uh, it is a 30 hertz. I know a lot of people uh, don't like the 30 hertz when they hear that number. But honestly, you know, as you, you'll see it in the videos, whether it's through the eyepiece or the onboard recording, uh, there's no lag that I experience using it. And it works perfectly fine with that 30 hertz. Uh, it does have an onboard battery. Uh, the onboard battery is going to give you uh, six hours of runtime uh, per FLIR. That, that sounds accurate to me. I've been using this for, for a little bit. Um, I've only had to recharge it a handful of times. And so that six hours sounds, sounds about accurate to me, although I have never timed it myself to see what that looks like. Uh, something to note on this uh, 19 millimeter, it is a fixed focus. And so there's no focus capability on the front. Um, for me, like I said, I, I prefer that when I pick it up and, and use it, it's just going to be in focus. Everything's going to work great. Now with that fixed focus design, um, under 13 feet, you know, things will start to get blurry on you, you know, but you can still see things fine enough, um, under, under 13 feet, but you know, typically you're using this, you're not looking at anything that close. Um, now with the onboard battery, you do have the ability here on the back. It has a USB-C port. And this is how you can charge it. You can also power it remotely with the USB power pack that way. And then you also use that to, um, to get your, uh, your, your content because this does have onboard video recording and, fo and photos. Uh, something to note on that, it has 16 gigabytes of internal storage. So it works, I mean, you def definitely plenty of, of space for that. And then it has a... Um, FLIR has an app, um, a FLIR Scout Pro app that's available for iOS, and that feature works really great. So, for example, uh, this comes with a, a USB-C cord here, and this is how you could charge it. This is how you can get data off of it, but you don't necessarily need to use this to get data. You know, this day, this day and age, everyone's using their, their phones for everything, and so with the app, um, you can download the videos and the photos straight to your phone, which is fantastic. So it's just a lot easier to view it that way. If you want to share, if you want to share, if you want to upload the videos somewhere or pictures uh, onto social media, it works fantastic in that regard. Um, so right now it's iOS only, um, assuming they'll have Android support down the road. Um, it does save them and the, the videos are in MPEG-4 uh, um, format. The unit itself, it's IP67 with a two meter drop test rating, uh, weighs one pound and two ounces. Uh, in your hand, it feels really good. It's nice and slim. Uh, you have a lanyard loop right here on the back. You have a tripod um, right here, you know, a tripod screw in deal here for a tripod. And then on the back here, this is how you activate uh, the Wi-Fi, turn on Wi-Fi, turn off Wi-Fi. If you don't want to have, um, you know, that, that ability where, where Wi-Fi is open on it. Uh, really easy to connect on the app. Uh, you just got to get it off the app store. Uh, really easy to connect the device that way. And uh, in the videos, well, something to note. Uh, so the display, you know, the image in the display is really good. Um, in most cases with onboard video, anybody who's used thermals before, you know this, uh, the videos are usually drastically worse uh, with, uh, with the onboard. Now, in the case of this Scout Pro, the videos look fantastic. Like the majority of all the videos I'm gonna show you um, are gonna be recorded through the app um, on, on an iPhone, and you'll see it looks fantastic. Uh, just as good as through the eyepiece, maybe even better. I mean, that could be because of the resolution on the, on, on the iPhone's display versus the display on the device, but the videos look fantastic like you can see. Uh, so it works fantastic for that. It is nice to be able to use it, you know, use your phone. Uh, if you're trying to capture something, 
um, you know, if you're trying to record something like that, uh, it does work really good that way at the tripod mount. You know, if you want to get like a magnetic base or something like that, um, or have this thing mounted on a, you know, on a tripod or something for a fixed uh, type of observation, uh, then you could use your app for that without having to always get behind the eyepiece. Now on the eyepiece, uh, you have a couple options. They do have this um, actual like eye cup thing that has, you know, this piece right here where you can suck it up right up on your eye. Uh, then they have this round one. Um, I prefer this round one more than anything. It just seems to work a lot better. Uh, it doesn't come with a lens cap. I know that's a concern for some people, um, you know, in terms of damaging the lens. The lens is pretty recessed in here. Um, I actually like not having a lens cap because myself, like whenever I'm hanging this on my neck or it's in a pouch or something, and I pull it out, I don't have to worry about like breaking the lens cap or anything like that. Uh, it does have an automatic shutter, you know, when it nukes itself. You know, not uniform correction, and you'll see that in the videos. You know, like all thermals that have that feature, you have a, a slight stutter sometimes when it's recalibrating itself. So you don't have to close the lens cap or anything to do that. Um, when I talked to Flair at Shot Show, they said they are looking into uh, making some kind of a lens cap. Uh, worst case, you know, if you purchase this thing before that's available, you just mic this thing and figure out what size, you know, scope flip cap that you need to put on there, and then you'll be in business there. Uh, something to note on the on the device, you know, with the onboard battery, uh, something I know I'm, I'm not necessarily a big fan of onboard batteries, you know, on, on devices just because if they fail or something like that, but having the ability to, to power it up if you need to with USB-C is a good feature. But the thing to note is with all these onboard uh, battery type devices, um, I highly recommend do not leave them in a discharge state for that long. That's always what, what kills these things in my experience. From talking to people that have like some of the older um, you know scouts that had the internal batteries they let it sit discharge for too long you know I've had guys that keep them in a safe for years they take it out and then you know next thing you know the battery's not charging up or holding a charge and so if you do get this thing um, I highly recommend just you know put reminders in your phone whatever the case is just try to keep the thing charged up and then obviously you know if you go out and use it, it makes sense just to charge the thing up before you're gonna take it out anyways um, but no, device works great. I'll kind of cover the, the buttons real quick. It's pretty straightforward. So here's your power button. It's just a um, long press to turn on, long press to turn off. Uh, once it's on, just a short press is gonna put it in standby mode. Um, I like standby mode a lot. Conserves battery runtime as well as it stops the display. It turns off the display so you're not gonna get light splash coming back on you, which is important if you're hanging it on a lanyard, you're not gonna have light coming up on your face like that. And then up here, this button, uh, this is how you access the menu. Uh, menu's pretty basic. Uh, FLIR designed this thing for law enforcement. Obviously, you don't have to be a law enforcement user to use it. Anybody who needs to get their own monocular can you know, use, find the same usefulness out of it. But basically, designed it for that law enforcement user. They wanted to keep it super simple. And so the menu is really basic. When you go in there, uh, that's how you can go in and find your pallets. And then when you get to your pallets, you just use these buttons here, your left and right buttons, to select the pallet that you want. Let it sit for a second, it times out, selects the pallet. This bottom button, this bottom button right here below the, uh, the left and right buttons, uh, this is how you uh, single press takes a picture, long press records video, another long press turns off the video. So really, really super basic. Uh, there isn't any way to, to change pallets on it. Like you can't use the left and right buttons to switch pallets. Uh, once the device is on, this is how you zoom in, this is how you zoom out. Uh, like I said, it's a 1x, uh, but it does give you a 2x, 4x, 6x, and then 8x magnification with the buttons. And so, um, yeah, and that, that works pretty good. You'll see in the videos, obviously, the more you magnify, like at 8x, you know, with this 19 millimeter 1x lens, um, you're going to have quite a bit of pixelation. Uh, but I think, t I think 2x works really good, so does 4x uh, for, for most use cases. Uh, so yeah, I'll kind of show you the onboard video. You can see what this thing looks like. Um, I think it looks fantastic. And then after that, I'll just wrap up the video like usual. So I sped this video up about 400 times the speed just so this section didn't take forever for you guys to watch it. She's gonna get out to 100 yards and she's gonna walk back and forth. I'm gonna zoom in digitally on the device and then rotate through the different pallets. You can see what the different pallets look like and then I'm gonna zoom in as well on those pallets so you can see what those look like with the zoom feature enabled. Now 2X zoom right here I think works fantastic on this device. Even 4X is pretty good. As you can see, uh, that's 4X. Um, you can definitely tell that that's a dog, that's a person, does a great job. You know, 6X, same thing, even though it pixelates quite a bit, you know, the more that you're gonna zoom in digitally. This is Sepia. I think it's the best looking palette on this device, performs great. It blends elements of white hot in there. It's a high contrast palette. Um, I think it's the best, the best one on this particular device. This next one here is called Heat. Um, it shows you the hottest objects in red. 
and then other you know the next color down is going to be yellow i think it does a good job you get some extra false hits but once something comes in view like her and the dog right there the algorithm does a pretty good job on it and of course you have your traditional black hot and white hot palettes on this device as well Sorry for the shakiness, I'm holding that thing by hand. Now the trucks out there on the highway, they would stand out better, uh, but the sun's been on the pavement here, this is in the morning, and so it's heating up the asphalt, and that's why you see how bright that is out there. This shot does a great job of showing the advantage of having a wide field of view device. Like the Scout Pro 32 degree field of view, you know, you can quickly pick this thing up and quickly cover a lot of ground scanning to see if there's anything out there. FLIR rates this device out to 500 meters. I'm pretty confident in that rating that they give it. Now, just keep in mind, this is still at 1x. You know, if I were to digitally zoom in on it, which I can't because I set this thing down on the toolbox of my truck to, to video myself, uh, that would do a, you know, a good job as well as showing more detail on me out there distance. But people stand out, you know, anybody who's looked at thermals, you know, it, we're vertical, we're upright, two-legged creatures. People stand out really well. If you're looking for more magnification, I would just hold out until FLIR releases higher magnification models later this year in 2025. To wrap up the video, I really like the Scout Pro a lot. Um, I think it's a, a good device and a good value for what you're getting. So price point wise, this is $2,295, which is a good price for the performance you're getting for a device that's not made in China. You know, it's really difficult for uh, American companies to compete against Chinese companies. Uh, obviously that's why so many things are made in China, right? The production costs are a lot cheaper. There's a lot of advantages over there to produce less expensive products. Um, in the thermal market right now, it's heavily dominated by Chinese companies. And so if you're not looking for a Chinese product, not that there's anything you know wrong with that um, if you want to purchase one of those. Um, but I know there's a lot of Americans right now that want to support American-based companies. And so if you're looking for a thermal monocular, you don't want to get something uh, made in China. The Scout Pro is good. It's a great option, in my opinion, uh, for the performance you're getting at the price point. Support-wise, you do get a three-year warranty on it. It comes standard with two years. You have to register it. You get an additional year. You're going to want to register it anyways because uh, as, as software updates become available for it, you'll have to be registered to download those updates. just takes a few minutes online anyways to do it. Not a big deal. I highly recommend doing it if you purchase this product. Um, yeah, if you have any questions uh, beyond you know what, what I answered here in the video for you guys, uh, you can reply back in the comments. I'll reply back as soon as I can. To be honest with you, I don't really check the videos that much. I'm not a professional content creator. I don't produce content very often here. Uh, so your best bet would probably just be to get a hold of me at TMVC. Yeah, that's my day job. Just give us a call at TMVC, ask for Will, and I'll answer all the questions you have as best as I can. If I can't, you know, if, you have, if you're a super technical guy and you have some advanced questions, if I can't answer you, I'll get a hold of Fleur and get you the answers. Uh, so as always, I appreciate you guys for watching, and you guys take care.